All right, it is time for presidential election model talk. I've been working on an election model for some time now. It's not fully released yet, uh, but for now, I'd like to introduce the model to you all and discuss some of the results based on the polls so far. All right, so here's what the model is forecasting as of February 26, 2024. Each state is simulated 50,000 times to obtain a win probabilities, and we use those state-level probabilities to simulate the Electoral College 40,000 times, uh, which, as we all know, greater than 270 electoral votes means you won the election, so this vertical line represents 270 votes. Anything on the right side of it means you got more. Um, so as you can see, as of now, Trump's Electoral College win probability is at 71.44%. Uh, Biden is at 26.49%, and the probability of a tie is 2.08%. You can look at this frequency distribution to see uh, with your eyeballs uh, where each simulation lies. Um, it's important to note uh, that it's still far too early for this to mean anything significant. Pollsters are primarily working on primary polls as of now. Um, so samples for certain states aren't as large as I'd like them to be, uh, which leads to greater variance than normal. But I'd argue this is a decent forecast of the election if it were to be held tomorrow with limited polling, as right now we don't have the most ideal polling situation because it's not the general election yet, but soon, very soon. Um, anyway, so here is a visualization of the win probabilities by key battleground state in the 2024 election. We can see that Wisconsin, over here on the far right, and uh, Pennsylvania are pretty narrow leads for Trump right now. So those are definitely under 60%, as you can see. Um, Michigan, which was the most blue of the three competitive Rust Belt states in 2020, is somehow pulling the best for Trump out of the three of Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. Michigan somehow right now in the polls is showing the strongest results for Trump. Um, there are reports that the Biden campaign is worried about their standing in Michigan, so it makes sense why that would be the case looking at the data. Uh, Arizona and Georgia are also uh, showing decent leads for Trump. Uh, these were very narrow Joe Biden states in 2020, and they're showing pretty healthy Trump leads at the moment. Uh, Trump is up between four to five points in the Arizona polling average. In 2020, Biden was up around four to five points prior to the election, and he ended up only winning it by around 4,000 votes. As for Georgia, Trump is up by around seven to eight points. Biden was leading there in 2020 by around 1.5 points in the week prior to the election, and I think he won it by a similar margin. Uh, so those two are looking quite interesting. It it does look like they're going to flip back red, but we'll see. It's still too early. Uh, Nevada over here is a shocking one. Uh, in 2020, Biden led by around four to five points leading up to the election, and he ended up carrying the state by 2.39 points. As of now, Trump is leading in the state by around six to seven points, which I didn't expect. Uh, but again, very early, not enough polling. During the summer, after the primaries end, is when they'll start cranking out the polls, so more samples will be good for this. Uh, also, uh, they're still going to probably do a debate, I think, um, and there's going to be more court troubles for Trump and uh, age or policy related issues for Biden could pop up at any time. So I'll keep you all updated as the weeks go by. Anyway, I took the liberty of filling out a map of the Electoral College as forecasted by my simulation. Now, most of the states that I'm certain will repeat their 2020 results will be shaded in as dark blue or dark red. Um, as for some of the more competitive states, win probabilities that are between 50 and 55% will be left blank. Right now, that's none of them, but eventually when we get more polls, some of them might be very narrow leads, uh, so those will be left blank. Win probabilities that are between 55 and 65% will be shaded as light blue or light red, and win probabilities that are between 65 and 80% will be a darker shade of blue or red. All else will remain solid blue or red. Uh, so as you can see here, Trump is currently leading in all of the key states. He'll have to maintain this lead until November, obviously, which is going to be a lot more controversies, a lot more court stuff. We'll see how that holds up. Biden, on the other hand, has seen consistent approval ratings at around 39%, uh, despite 
improving economic sentiment, which indicates that the disapproval is disconnected from economic concerns and more likely to be about his age and overall fitness for office. So they're both uh, they're both not facing ideal circumstances to change things. Uh, but right now, you would rather be Trump if you were running. In order for Biden to win the election, because as you can see here, the GOP is above 270. Um, but that's only if this comes true. So if Biden wants to win the election, which he does, uh, what he most likely will need to do is he'll need to sweep these three states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Uh, and then he will probably need to win uh, Maine, the statewide vote, and the first congressional district there. That would get him to 270, holding all else constant. If he doesn't get Maine, let's say he's at 268 with this one because he doesn't get those two electoral votes, he can get them from Nevada. And there are rumors that the Biden campaign thinks North Carolina is in play this time around, so expect them to campaign more heavily there. So they do have paths to victory. It's not a foregone conclusion. Still way too early. Not enough polling. But uh, yeah, this is what... This is what it looks like as of now, uh, assuming all the polls are generally accurate. Um, but yeah, if he wins the Rust Belt states, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, uh, then and he wins the main congressional district one and the statewide vote, that nets him exactly 270. You can do the math. It's, it is accurate, bro. Do not correct me. Um, anyway, now let's talk more model specifics. So the model uses the presidential polls data set from 538. We filter and pivot this to focus on Trump versus Biden. We have weights for time, 538 pollster grades, sample size, and poll population. So for example, recent polls matter more than old polls. So at a certain point, older polls aren't really uh, useful for calculating polling averages because like a poll in Wisconsin in like November isn't relevant uh, if we had like 20 polls since then, right? Especially by the same pollster. Uh, so that's why we have weights for time. Um, also, poll population is considered, which means that likely voter polls are more significant than registered voter polls, which are more which are more significant than just polls of adults or voters in general, where, where they don't really ask if you're registered to vote. They just check if you're older than 18. Um the 538 pollster grades, which are created by 538 based on historical pollster accuracy and transparency, are also used as weights. And then sample size is self-explanatory. Um, I might add more weights later on, but for now, this is what we're working with, so there's that. Uh, also, uh, as for why I'm making this so early, I mean, I would like to build up somewhat of a following on here. I think I have things of value to say regarding this topic, so that's why I'm making this. Uh, also, I wanted to get a front-runner advantage over the big dogs in election modeling, like The Economist, 538, Nate Silver, and others. Um, their models will likely be more sophisticated, so I will cover them, and you should look at them when they come out, because uh, they include things like... Um, Incumbency advantage, economic sentiment, inflation analysis, and whatnot. I wouldn't say my model is bad, but like it's not that. Like mine is very poll based. Um, I use weights and I use the polling data. I'm not doing as much as these guys, so I will look at those when they come out. But I wanted to get mine out there early so I can talk about it, talk more election stuff, see see where things are headed before those guys do it. So you're not like entirely reliant on them during the summer. I can do it when I feel like it, which will probably be basically every week, but yeah. Anyway, uh, abuse, very aggressively abuse the subscribe button, um, press like for the algorithm, uh, comment, leave your thoughts, give suggestions, yell at people, it's your thing, uh, subscribe as I said earlier, and have a Patreon, but there's nothing on there yet, but one day, bro, one day. Anyway, that is the video, I think. This went well. I did a PowerPoint instead of like editing things. Don't know if that's good. Don't know if anyone will like this, but this is what I did. So we'll see. Leave a comment on if you like the PowerPoint style. <laughs> it's very Mike Israel tell, you know what I mean? Like the guy from Renaissance Periodization. I'm like that, but for politics. Anyway, goodbye. Peace out.